That brings us to item number 11, which is our superintendent's report. I'll turn it over to Dr. Heffel. <clears throat> yes, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, indeed, uh, many great and wonderful things are happening here in the district. And of course, uh, I think one of the big news stories for us for last week was the, um, uh, the unfortunate fire we experienced on a bus uh, at Dutch Fork Elementary School. But the good news that came out of that was that everyone involved handled their role, their individual role, perfectly. Uh, a student called attention uh, to the driver of, of smoke or something to that effect, the way the bus happened to be in a, uh, a good location in front of the school. The driver acted most heroically. The kids uh, did what they had practiced doing in terms of getting off the bus safely, systematically, calmly, without any injuries or any panic. And once uh, they were off the bus, um, our assistant principal, uh, Beth Poor there, uh, made the decision that they needed all to move to the back of the campus and evacuated the school. Everything went according to plan. So we're very thankful there were no injuries. Uh, the school was checked uh, for smoke to make sure it was ready for kids before anybody was uh, entered in what could have been a very uh, tragic situation, ended up uh, not being that because everybody knew what to do and they did it. So we're good at what we practice and uh, our people and all of our schools are practicing all of those kinds of drills uh, consistently to know what to do in events such as that. On a much more positive note, um, we uh, got our, since our last board meeting, we've had our SAT results and uh, we were the second highest ranking district in South Carolina in terms of our average, which was uh, above the national average, of which we're very proud. But even uh, what we're even prouder of is that we had the largest percentage of our students of any district in the state take the test, 68% of our kids. So uh, that is huge. Uh, we just learned that 11 of our teachers here in the district were awarded Bright Ideas grants uh, for this year uh, from uh, the Mid-Carolina Electric Cooperative. So congratulations to all of those folks. Uh, one of our teachers, one that you happen to know, uh, Sim Asbel, who's an agricultural and animal science instructor at the Center for Advanced Technical Studies, has been named uh, the WatchVox Teacher of the Month. So there'll be some information being circulated about him very shortly. From this past weekend at the Class 3A um, Band Directors uh, Lower State Championship, uh, we had the we had the top two bands in the competition. Uh, Chapin High finished first, and Irmo High finished second, out of a number of bands that were competing. So we were exceedingly well represented. And I think sometimes some of the things of greatest note are things that you're really not expecting. And today, when I picked up uh, the state newspaper and saw the letters from the editor, um, I saw a letter that caught my attention. And I think it's significant enough that I'm going to share it with you in case you uh, missed it. But this is from today's state newspaper. Uh, and it's a letter from Deborah Temples, who is apparently uh, one of our uh, grandparents here in, uh, in the district, although she lives outside the district. She says, when I attended a recent grandparents' breakfast with my grandchildren at Ballantyne Elementary School, I stood in awe and wonder at the planning put into this school. Each grade had its own color-coordinated corridor. Matching tiles were in the floors. Fresh paint was on the walls. Everywhere I looked sparkled. Children were happy. I suggest that all parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, and any really interested parties tour this school. Then call, text, post, tweet and email anybody and everybody and ask, quote, when will your schools look like this? Not how, but when. If a politician says this is not possible, then vote someone else into office to address this need. 
All children are our future. They will be the teachers, nurses, parents, and yes, the road engineers. Do you want to take a chance on the beginning education of, a, of your young heart surgeon or your daycare worker? Every child in this state deserves our sacrifices in order to be a better person. I thought that was a wow. powerful le uh, letter in tribute to one of our schools. And I would say to Ms. Temples, I invite you to visit any of our schools because I think uh, you'll be in awe of any one of them. May we clap for that? That was great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, as one of our staff members said today, when they see a, a headline at something about one of our schools, they're almost afraid to read the article, and uh, that was kind of the reaction I had. But when I read it, it was like, wow, that was uh, that was just terrific. Hmm. All right, we will now go to um, Mr. Richardson, our Chief Finance and Operation Officers, for our monthly financial reports. Mr. Richardson. Thank you, Dr. Hefter, members of the board. Uh, it's time to come back down to earth now after all the good news. Thank you, Dr. Heffer, for letting me follow that up. Um, in your packet in Exhibit D, you have your monthly financial statements for the month of September, which means we are officially, we've done 25% of the fiscal year that's behind us now. Um, on the first, on the bottom page of the revenue, you'll see that we've had total revenue for the month of September of $5.75 million, and for the year we've collected $18.8 million. On the last page of the expenditures, you will see that for the month of September we have expended $13.14 million, and year to date $25.8 million. And if you do the math, you'll see that our expenditures are about $7 million more than our revenues. This is the reason why we keep a fund balance uh, to help get us through these lean times. We'll start seeing this turn around probably uh, later in the year, December. These numbers will start to flip over a little bit and our revenue will start coming in a little bit stronger, but I did want to draw your attention to that. I'll be glad to answer any questions if you have any. Ms. Hammond, yeah, make sure your I green light I'll is on. My <clears throat> I just, it's just follow up. In other words, is December the last uh, does do all the tax money and everything have to be in by a certain date by December, or does it vary there? No, it. Uh, we we get a good bit of it in the in the month of December, January is when it's typically so still, due. Okay. But we start receiving a big part of our uh, property tax relief money in in the month of December as well. Okay. Any other questions? I did have one thing I wanted to mention that. Um, is not on the agenda, and I hope it's okay if I do this, but I did want to draw to your attention to, to something that I just found out about recently, and I wanted to make you aware of it, that uh, based upon the recent assessment information that, um, that, that the county auditors received, they've had to, um, have they determined that our 52.5 mils for debt service is not sufficient to cover our obligations for this year, so they've had to, they're having to increase the millage um, per their authority by 2.3 mils to offset the shortfall that they estimate to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $1 million. So uh, tax bills have already gone out. Um, it's a minimal increase, but they have increased taxes for debt service. Can you explain that again? They estimated due to assessments coming in lower than they had estimated or, um, that they've had to increase the debt service bill is by 2.3 mils. Otherwise, they were looking at being about a million dollars short from our obligations. It's nothing, it's nothing that we've done. Um, we've kept it level, but they had to because of the assessments coming in lower. Who, who did it though? The I believe state? You said the county, the county Lexington, auditor. Lexington, Lexington, Lexington okay, county. That's why I, I, I never got that. The county mm -hmm. increased it. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you, when you say the county, you mean Lexington County, right? Well, Lexington County handles the debt service millage for both counties right. for our district. Um, Technically, the assessments for Richland County are what came in below estimates, and so that's what's caused them to have to do this. Right. Any other questions? Not to belabor the point, but obviously there was, both counties have reassessed in the last few years, and we've all heard of depressed home values or home or business values, so I would assume that has had some impact on that. But this was an automatic by the county auditor, nothing that we requested, but it services our debt. That, that's correct. Thank you for the information. Mr. Gant, 
I had one more. Ms. Hammond, with you. Yes. Um, so that one, and you said it was a $1 million shortage. Would it come out of our pocket? Is that the point? If, if, they, if they did not increase millage, they would have looked to us. To, if, if in, you know, once everything happens, right. if they were actually a million dollars short, we would have had to make up that shortfall. I got you. Correct. Okay. If, and, you know, and for some reason that they overcollect, obviously they'll have to adjust the millage uh, next year. But right now, a, a 2.3 mil increase was put on debt service. And that's the end of my report. All right. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. That concludes the superintendent's report.